Can you guys see me now? Hello. Hi, Sarah. Awesome. I did have you all muted when like to join the meeting. So if you want to say hi, you're going to have to unmute yourself. Um, I have it recording and um, I'm like one of those people that's like a right on time. So three minutes early for me is a pretty good um, deal. If you guys want to show your faces, it's always nice to do the meetings with uh, faces, but you don't have to. Um, hi. I didn't even shower today, you guys, so it's a good thing, like, this is a virtual meeting and you can't smell me, but, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to close the closet door so you don't have to see my husband's clothes. All right, so I'm going to wait until 8.30 so everyone can pop on. We have Andrea, we have Nora, we have JC, I think, is that how I say your name, hopefully? Um, and then as the meeting starts if you want to mute yourself otherwise I can too but you can talk until we officially start um, I have a recording so this fun part will show up too I don't really know how to stop that so um, I'm pretty new to zoom and as far as like being the meeting leader so I'm trying new things out um, on the zoom so I just set it to record right off the bat so it'll probably get some of this chatter in there. If you guys um, are able to, if you can get the document and take a peek, I'm going to go like with JC, I'm just going to mute you for now unless you want to say something. I'm going to go down the document throughout this training. So um, it'll pretty much follow it. I'm one of those people that's like, um, I like to hear it. I like to see it. I like to do it. So I think you all, like everyone learns by um, all the ways of training. So people are going to pop on. Perfect. It's going to be dirty. Carmen is coming on. I have you guys automatically muted um, when you first join. But if you have any issues with audio or visual, please let me know. Um, and then the chat will be available too. So. And I'm going to take a sip of my white cloth while we wait for people. Hmm. Carmen, thanks for showing your face. I'm glad I can see somebody's free face. You're muted for now. You can hear all on mute you. Maybe. Hi, Carmen. Hi. I couldn't hear you for a while, but now I can. Okay, you can hear me. Perfect. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to wait until 8.30 before I get started, so one more minute. And then if people are like me, they'll just um, hop on a few minutes late, like I always do to all the meetings, like two minutes late, notoriously. So they'll just have to rewatch it or just start from where they are. But we'll wait until it just turned 8.30. Um, it's very nice. So um, I, what I'll do is I'm going to go through the documents I created and I'll just get started now just so we can keep this timely and um, everyone's uh, bedtimes in mind. So the document I created um, is I'm not like I don't work with Facebook. I uh, this is this is just me in my tips and tricks that I have learned in the year in the business. I started um, in August of 2018 when Facebook um, was just kind of sort of like trying to um, stop direct sales, but not really. Then a few months into it, they really started cracking down. And now people who are joining have to be very careful about what they're doing. Um, but it doesn't mean that the system is not duplicatable. It's not replicatable. It can still be easy. Um, you can still do direct sales easily with um, these tips and tricks I've given you. A lot of the things that I have on there are not going to take very much extra time um, in the scheme of things, especially to get you to stay out of jail. So again, I don't work with Facebook. I am no by no means an expert, um, but this is what I have, like the knowledge I've accumulated. And I will say that I've been Facebook jail free for like three weeks. So I feel like now I've become an expert. <laughs> so um, we're gonna start um, with 
just going down the document. So I printed it out to kind of reference throughout this. You can take notes on it if you printed it out, um, refer to it later. I made it in that Wix document so you could forever just come back to it. So if you want to save it as one of your files. And after I do this training, I will probably put that document out to like the Zaya Gal or the Zaya Nation or whatever so that other people can use these because uh, none of us need to be in jail. So um, first thing is, um, Use the chat, or if you want to, raise your hand if I can see, I can only see one person. Um, how many of you have a business page on Facebook? Does anybody have a business page on Facebook yet? And um, if you do, do you use it? So I guess I, I'll just keep on going. So the people who have a business page are already step one into my first part of this. My recommendation is, is that you create a business page for your, um, in order to do your posting. So I have this in the document. It looks like people are starting to join, perfect. So in the document, I have to avoid Facebook jail. You want to do your post as a business page. If you're viewed as like less spammy to Facebook, if your business is doing it, because you're a legit business. Now, I honestly, I don't know that if you throw Facebook money and you do like some ads every once in a while, does that help? I don't know. I mean, again, I'm not a Facebook expert, um, but if you're like a business and not a person and you're, you're posting some of these things, it shows it like as less spammy. So to do that, I have step by step on how to create your business page. And I know it sounds like a lot. Now I have a business page, an Instagram account that's Zaya, an Instagram account that's personal, and then a VIP group. Like it doesn't have to be tougher than it is. Um, you can link your Instagram if you make it public, like your Zaya one. You can link it to a business page because Facebook and Instagram speak to each other. So every time I go and post an Instagram, it automatically goes to my business page. So at least I seem a little bit active. What I like about business pages is that this is a page that you can direct like your family to that maybe doesn't really want to follow your VIP group, but they still want to support you. Like, hey, look, my granddaughter sells Zaya. Here's her business page. Like she's not going to tell people to join your VIP group, right? But like a business page is like a legit thing on Facebook. I heard that like 90% of people won't shop, whether it's in store or online if you don't have a Facebook business page. It like makes you legit. So create a business page and then you can still do all your posts to your groups, your VIP group, your party as a business page. So you will create your business page and then you'll create your groups just like you always said. We're not going to change anything like that. But then you'll you'll be on Facebook, you'll go into your page and you'll say link is this existing group. And so any groups that you have you can link it. And then when you're in the group, it'll say, how would you like to post? Would you like to post as your business page? So it shows me as posting from my business page, or do you want to post as, as Sarah Cook? And so then I will choose that I want to post as Sarah Cook Zaya Active Independent Representative. And that's my business page. I'm not creative. If you're a creative person, like even on here, I even had the example active by Sarah. I mean, I could have done that to begin with, but I'm one of those people that like, thinks that I'm going to come up with like an amazing name and then I never do. So I'm just going to be plain Jane the whole time and be Sarah um, Cook's I active for independent representative. <laughs> and so my VIP says Sarah's VIP and it is linked together. And then that makes it so um, when I'm posting to my VIP group, when I'm posting to my parties, it doesn't come that Sarah Cook is posting, but Sarah Cook's um, the business is posting. Now it does make it tricky. You might want to on occasion post as yourself if you're doing um, a tagging, like um, I will tag the guests about one or two times in parties, um, it, usually just one time. And it's one of the, you guys, this is the last time to order. This is like, you have four hours left to shop and then I tag everyone. Um, and you can't tag everyone if you're a business page because taggy, spammy and business pages wouldn't do that. Um, so you, you would have to switch like interacting as and switch it to your personal and you can still do your post and then you can tag everyone. So you, there are some limitations to a business page and posting that you, you don't have as like your personal. So um, for your, your massive posts, 
always do it as like a business page if you can do it. So in your group, and I just started implementing this about like two weeks ago on my VIP page and in my, um, in my group and in, in my parties, and it has made a difference. I have stayed out of jail for that. So, um, Lindsay, sorry. Okay. She's having a hard time. I don't know how to help you, Lindsay. If somebody wants to type back on how to help Lindsay. Honestly, if you can hear me from your phone, the visuals are all on that Wix document and you can just follow us there. So if you can hear me, that's perfect. Um, so let's go to tip number two, how often to post. This is a question that, um, this is probably the most frequently thing like that you guys hear of to avoid Facebook jail is how often to post, like don't post a lot. Um, but that is definitely the, the most common way to get yourself in jail is by posting too often. And that is why most people get in Facebook jail on Wednesday night, because we are all so excited about our new releases that we go crazy and we post it everywhere. Well, you're going to get yourself in jail if you post it to like let's say you have two or three parties happening and then you have 10 items and you post each 10 items like as their own posts in three different groups that's 30 posts in a matter of like two hours Facebook is totally gonna think you're a spammer then even if you do it from your business page that's my my guess so what you're gonna my recommendation or suggestion to you is if you can somehow make it into a collage where you have like two or three items in one post. Like if we have 10 items, can you group like items so that you're either doing one post in the group or two or three at the most on new release date? Because if you have two or three parties happening and then you have to post each time like to different groups, that's going to be too much and too much activity. And even then I would recommend scheduling it out. Like you guys, your people in your groups are in especially parties are not waiting at noon at Wednesday like we are. So they're not like, oh my God, what's happening at noon? And if they are, like they're probably diehard Zaya fanatics and they know that they can follow the Zaya Instagram account and tell them, like any of my diehard like Zaya was, they're like, oh my God, I need that Oso Sop. Tell me when it comes out. Like I will message these people that I know are diehards and I will tell them, hey, I'm working on Wednesday. I'm probably not gonna post, I'm not gonna message you. Go follow Zaya Active on Instagram and you can see what they have. They know how to shop with me. They know where my link is, you know, so I'm not missing out on their business and you're not getting into jail. So, um, and if you guys have questions as you go along, use the chat like right now. And then at the end, um, we'll do like a Q and A session. So write your questions down if you have them at the end. So, um, on, on Wednesday, it's really important. Number one, I'm going to go off on tangents and not totally follow this script, but don't use the stock photo from the website. Also, don't use um, the collages people have made without making something um, on their own. Um, that's so weird. You guys are having issues connecting. I have like a, quite a few faces on here, so I am not sure if maybe you want to switch browse. I can they can they maybe message them to switch browsers if anybody is able to on that group chat. Okay, so. Um, I recommend doing all your posts a half hour apart. So your Facebook parties, like I said, are probably not, they're probably all working Wednesday at noon and they're probably not waiting by their computer screens at noon to see what the new releases are for people who are having parties. So what you could do is put your post in your VIP page, like right away at noon, 1231, whenever you can get to them and then schedule them out a half hour and in increments in your parties. So they might not show up till two or two 30 or three or 3.30 in your parties or four or five, whatever. You just schedule them because your, your party guests are probably not shopping until seven or eight o'clock on Wednesday night anyway. So it doesn't matter if you get it out to them at noon. Our stock is okay now where if they don't go on and order it like at two o'clock on Wednesday, they're not going to miss out. Now, when I first started, it was like detrimental that you told people to go shop at like two o'clock because they would miss out. Like even my, my, I myself, like I got off work at one 30 on a Wednesday and the first time they launched the florals they were sold out when I got off work um, so it used to be that we would sell out in hours and it was really important that you got it to the, your groups at noon on Wednesday but now we have the inventory and the supply that you can actually release it um, you can release it earlier than uh, 
talk to you guys. Uh, me and my husband are sharing space right now. So <laughs> he's being very kind and um, quiet in the corner. So you can, um, sorry, I got it went on a tangent, but you can, you can not have to worry about inventory selling out if you don't post it until the evening that night, because people in your parties are probably not popping onto Facebook until six o'clock at night anyway. So they're not going to go and um, like check at noon. So schedule them out so you don't get in jail and also try and clump them into one or two or three posts so you're not having to do, um, you know, like 30 different posts. Okay. So that is don't post too often. I recommend if you're doing like, first of all, I, I never do three parties because that's too much stress, but some people do three parties a week. If you're doing three parties a week, you probably cannot do 10 posts a day in each party because that is 30 posts and you're doing your VIP. So you're going to have to you're going to have to use quality over quantity when you're doing your posts if you have more like three or more parties. Now, if you're doing two parties, you can justify, you can do 10 quality posts a day if you're scheduling them out at least half hour increment. So make sure you pay attention. Okay, in so-and-so's group, I did it at 5 a.m. So in this group, I need to do it at 5.30 a.m. And then I'll go back to the other group at 6 a.m. So what I try and do is just remember who's whose group am I posting it first in? And they're, they're like the on the hour post. And then whose group am I doing second? And they're the half hour post. And I schedule them all now on Facebook because scheduling apps seem to get me in jail. And I also don't know how to schedule yet. Um, like, or I, I don't know how to, I used to use SinShare. I used to use Post My Party. Um, I still actually use pay for SinShare and use it on occasion, um, but I don't use it for my parties anymore. Um, so I use an app called Easy Note, and there's all sorts of different apps that you can use, but this app was recommended by Zyra, so I, I downloaded it. And you can create different folders in it, and so it's useful for me because I just have like a product folder, and those are my product posts that I do for, um, for my parties. And then um, I will tweak it so it's not the same every single um, post, even in party to party, um, just a little bit with the verbiage. And then I will like put it and I'll use a schedule feature in Facebook. Um, but you can do post my party, you can do send share. Just be really careful because you're using the exact same pictures in post my party and send share in every single like party that you're doing and that's going to get you flagged. So that's why I stopped using it because I wanted to use different pictures and different verbiage. And it's so much easier to just schedule it on the Facebook app. So um, that is not doing it too often. Don't post on new release day like 20 times between noon and 2 p.m. And so we're going to do original content and photos. So that kind of segments in there. So never copy and paste exact verbiage. You guys, I know you're like, what? Somebody told me to do this. Like, yeah, I told you to do it. Way back in the day, I told you to do it. So I said, don't worry about stealing from me. I want you to steal. Like, I want this to be easy for you. But then Facebook really crammed down on us and said, you're not original. If you are copying and pasting somebody else's words, you're not original and people don't want to see it. So it not only hurts you because you go to the bottom of their algorithms if it's not original content, but it also hurts the person you steal from because, um, and I didn't know this, you know, this is like I said, I'm not a Facebook expert now. I feel like I am, but I don't work for Facebook and I didn't know this, but I got myself into jail by like allowing people to copy my, my templates and my verbiage. And so what you want to do is use the pictures that we have. That's perfect. That's going to save you time, but put something on it. It takes about 10 seconds to load it into an app and just write your website on it. Just write myzaya.com backslash Sarah Cook Zaya. Put it right in the bottom corner of it. Then Facebook sees it as a totally new picture and it's not the same picture, but really, um, you know, so, or, and also don't use the exact verbiage as yourself. So if you're posting from one part of the next and you're like, I'm going to post about shorts in this post. Well, great, but change your wording. Like, and it doesn't have to be the entire paragraph. I'm just talking about like, Hey, who loves shorts? You know, like I, I used to hate shorts and now I love them because I shorts are amazing. Now I've got one word there. And then I go into just who loves shorts in the next one. And I don't use like, and I just throw in a different emoji here and there, and I don't use the second sentence in the other one. I'm talking about like 10 second differences that'll just save you like um, time 
from not getting into Facebook jail. So you can throw in different emojis there. Like in this one, I use purple hearts. And in this one, I use stars. And in this one, I use the, the runny emoji. Like just use different emojis and that, that views it as different as far as I know. Again, I'm not an expert, but I'm trying. So um, never use a stock photo from the website. I know on Wednesdays, this is hard because you're getting them emails in your emails. You're getting their collages, but you can make your own collage or wait like an hour. This is what I, honest to God, this is what I do. I do not take my lunch break until 1 p.m. now on Wednesdays, and I wait until somebody has put the pictures on Desire Marketing, um, and I'm not, like, I appreciate those people, so maybe someday I can pay back, um, but right now I work, and um, so on noon on Wednesday, I'm not creating the collages always, but sometimes I am, and I will share them with the group, but if you are using somebody else's collage, just throw your, your website on it, throw a sticker on it. Um, like there's so many different ways to make it so it's not the same picture and never use a stock photo from the website. Um, that'll definitely get you in jail, especially on a Wednesday. Um, there's a lot of apps out there. You guys can put in the comments what apps you use. Um, lately I've been using, when I just put in verbiage on a picture, I use PicMonkey because it doesn't throw in the ads all the time. And so it's really fast to just save it if it's just putting text in it. Um, Word Swag is the same way, really fast work through just putting text into it. Canva is good for putting like graphic design images together. So if you want to make a cause, um, it, it takes a little time to learn it, but it's great. So um, Facebook, all it wants to do is bring value to people. It doesn't want you like, so if you are using the exact same as other people, it's going to say that's not valuable. Su you know, Susie already posted this. So, um, um, is it okay to use Instagram photos? If you want to use the, Annie, um, sorry, if you want to use the chat in Zoom, if you're able to, otherwise, um, we'll do this at the end. Well, I guess you can use that. That's fine. But, um, Annie's question is, is it okay to use Instagram photos or the website photos? And yes, but not like, yes and no, the Instagram photos, I would still put it in a collage of some sort. Like, are you're screenshotting it, so it might view it as your original because you screenshot it and save it to your phone. I don't know. I know that like each photo when it's put on Facebook, again, I don't work for Facebook, so I only know what I've read from articles, but it assigns like a number to it. So like if I put the picture on there um, of the Instagram picture and it's assigned a number and then you save it for me and then you post it right there, it says, well, that's the exact same picture. It, it was number, you know, 211 and, you know, and, somebody else is using it it's not original but I don't know about the Instagram pictures because you are screenshotting it then you're cropping it and um, so it might be okay but I still honestly suggest just putting on your text to it or putting it into a collage like they usually um, will put in three or four pictures of the same item you could take it and put it into a collage of, of like the two side-by-side -side pictures I would still recommend to do that but Instagram pictures are better than stock photos um, but that is because you are you're screenshotting it and you're cropping it so it's different than pressing save on the image on the website it, it Facebook like can tell I don't know that it's I always get flagged if I use stock photos so I've, I've not used stock photos for like over six months um, so honestly, so this original content, the very best thing you can do for your business, you guys, is show yourself. People do not want to see the Instagram photos. They do, they, they do want to see real people. So if other people are sharing images and they say, okay, to share, I still recommend throwing um, it into a collage or making it your own or putting a sticker on it. Because again, when they post it to the Daya Marketing, Facebook assigns it a number. It's already seen that as a picture that's already in Facebook land. If you press save photo and you don't change it in your app somehow and you just put it in under yours and like a copy and paste, it sees it as the exact same thing and it's not going to um, show it as a popular item on the algorithm either. So you want, you want to be original. So Facebook will any selfies of yourself, any pictures of yourself, they put those to the top of the algorithms for people to see. Like they know it's original content and it's you. So if you want your posts, like this is a whole nother tangent, my VIP group posts are not being seen. It's because you need to put yourself out there more than other people. So if you have a Everyone has a smartphone that has the capability of having a timer on it. Um, I bought a selfie stick that's a tripod 
from Amazon for like $9.99, whatever. It was really cheap and it can tripod, it can put it in there so you can selfie stick it or you could put it on like a surface that's tall, tall enough where you can take a picture, set the timer, take some pictures of yourself, put yourself into a collage, um, or, or also just a selfie is fine too. I mean, you don't have to have somebody take pictures. You don't have to be like out in the middle of a beautiful field or in a building or do a photo shoot. Like you want original content, okay? So show yourself in Zaya at the gym, at home, selfies. People wanna see your mess, your messy house. Like they're not gonna judge you because then they view you as a real person. So you're not just like this perfect Zaya rep, you know, that like, look, she has a full-time job and then she does these beautiful photos. Like, no, this is me. I'm not wearing makeup today because I didn't have time, I, you know, and like I didn't shower, but I still got my workout in. Like people love that. Take a picture of it. Um, so tip number four, this is really um, top on the list too for, um, getting yourself into jail is going too fast and that's with anything in Facebook replying commenting posting like all of it your activity if you go too fast or messaging they see you as like a bot or a spammer because they're thinking that if you, you didn't type that fast you copied and paste and copying and pasting is not original that's spamming so if if you are like um, messaging tons of people and you copy and paste the exact same message and you send it like boom, 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 boom. They're going to put you in Facebook messaging jail and you can't message anybody for 24 hours. If you have a post that somehow got like, this happened to me on our anniversary, I posted a picture of us and I had everyone say, you know, like, congratulations, this and that. And so then I was like replying back to every single person. And I said, thanks, thanks, thank you. And guess what? That got me in jail because I replied too many times to one picture and I did it too fast. So I, it's kind of like silly, but I do, I do less activity now on other things in Facebook because I don't want to get into jail. So if, so what I do now is if like that same post were to happen, I'll wait till five, 10, 15 people comment and I'll do one mass comment. And I'm like, Hey, thank you everyone. I really appreciate your kind thoughts and words. That's so nice. And you can do this for anything. So like if you have games in your Facebook, you're like, Oh my God, I'm supposed to be replying comment to people in groups. That's what helps the algorithm. It's totally true. It does. It does help the algorithm. The more people reply and comment to it. However, you should be encouraging your host to do that way more than you because she's not on their radar, right? So you should be doing great host coaching to tell your host, Please do some posts during the party if you feel comfortable. Um, like do a post of yourself in your Zaya, a review in your Zaya, a few things like, hey, it's the first day to shop. Who's excited? On the last day, oh my gosh, you guys, it's the last day to shop. Like your host can be posting some things for you so you don't have to post as often. And your host should also be replying to things too. So if in your this or that game, I'll, all I do is this or that game. So I've stopped doing for every person that comments, you get um, an entry. And I used to do that in my parties, um, but it got too hard to tally them all. And so now I just do strictly games and in my games, I'm still not replying to every single comment. I usually do like or love their comments, but, um, a lot of times I'll, I'll put in like, Hey everyone, thanks for your, um, for your votes. It's so awesome to see, you know, your different, um, choices. Uh, make sure you vote by Tuesday night because I'll tally them on, on Wednesday morning. And so I'll do one post reply back and then your host will hopefully reply back to all of your, if you do some good hostess coaching. And that will put the algorithm on the top because Facebook algorithm, if you reply, comment, like things, if it's getting a lot of hits and likes, um, it puts it in the top of people's newsfeed. And so you really do want people to do it and you yourself should do it on occasion. I'm not telling you to not comment back to everything. I'm telling you to be selective and try like not to do it too fast. Um, so because that does, it does get you into jail if you're posting like that many posts a day and then you're commenting that many times a day. So um, let's see here. Friend requests. This one's really straightforward. You do not want to have like a hundred friend requests out there that views Facebook views you as spammy. So go in and clean up your friend requests. If you have friend requests out there, this is step-by-step step how to do it. Go delete them. Like if, even if it's people you know and you're like offended, like they should have um, <laughs> added me and they didn't, 
delete that request because it looks bad on the whole scheme of algorithms on if you're spammy or not, if you have like 20 friend requests out there and people are not accepting your friend request. And I know I send friend requests to people who I want to see my messages and I will do that. People that have purchased, I will send them a friend request because I want them to get follow up messages from me and Facebook will, you know, put their you all know this, if you send a Facebook message to somebody who's not your friend, it goes into an other folder. And then if they don't read it right away, they don't even know it's there. Like you'll get one notification from Facebook, so-and-so sent you a request. And if you don't check it right then and there and go to your other folders, you have no idea. And this has happened to me, like on the business side of it, somebody finally posted in the group and was like, Sarah, I was trying to message you for help on sizing and you didn't respond. And I had no idea because it went to that other request. Well, even I didn't know. So if people who are not used to that, they won't know. Um, and so you, you sometimes do want to send people friend requests so you can make sure that they see it. But what you just want to be very conscious and like every week or two go in and if they haven't accepted it, just delete your request to them. Um, and when anybody purchases from you, you have their information in your back office and you can go and text them. So that's what I do. If they don't accept my friend request, they haven't read my Facebook message, I um, will go in and I will text them and say, hey, have you purchased your item? Join my VIP group, you know, um, and I'll send them a personal text because texting is not going to get you in Facebook jail if it's on your phone. So final tips and tricks. Um, your shopping link, um, every time you post your shopping link, Facebook doesn't like it. So you want to limit how many times you're posting your shopping link. People will find it as long as you do good coaching to them. So in my VIP group, they all know it's all in the announcement section. So um, you can go and um, it, just make sure in your welcome video that you're telling people, I'm not going to put so-and-so's Facebook uh, or so-and-so's shopping link in every single post go to the announcement section. And so every time I do a live video in their groups, which ideally you should be going live every night in your parties. Um, I understand I'm, I also don't do this as I, I, I know I should practice what I preach and I should go live every night, but on occasion I only do about two lives in a party. And um, so when you're doing your lives, you should tell them, go to the announcement section of the group and explain to them how to get there. If you're on a computer, the announcement section is on the left side. If you're on your mobile device, the announcement section is on the top and then your shopping link is there. And then post the shopping link on occasion. If people are, first of all, somebody says, where's the shopping link? You can't find it. Obviously reply with the shopping link. Um, and then, you know, on the very popular post, like if you get like your new releases, and you posted them and people are like, oh my God, I love them. And you're getting about five to 10 comments. That post is going to go in the top of the algorithms and people are going to see it. So on that particular post, it would probably be conducive to put the shopping link in the comments and shopping links in the comments is, is better, but don't put it in every single post that you have. That's again, you're going to go too fast. So you're going to be copying Like you're going to want to speed up and do this fast. So you're going to copy and paste the post in there. And then Facebook's going to say you're going too fast and put you in jail. So don't put it on every post. Um, go live. That is the very best thing that you can do to avoid Facebook jail is to go live and tell everyone the things that you want to tell them in your many, many posts. Like go live. If you're like wanting to do an announcement, I do a birthday giveaway, I'll do a monthly giveaway. You know, like if you want people to know that, go live and then in your live do that. Also Facebook stories is a very hidden gem that some people use and some people don't. But I find that more people view my stories and I never get into jail by doing stories ever. Like I feel like that's like a uncharted territory that Facebook is like okay with you being spammy in. So, and that's the part where people see the most, like I can see that 120 people will see my story. And um, uh, started out, try with your stories to show your face because people tend to click on it then. If you're doing Wednesday, I still do it, new release post in my stories. And I do it on, um, this is nice because your business page you can actually um, on Instagram if you're on your business like your your public Instagram that's linked to your Facebook business page because after this training everyone should have a business page now um, you can go into the Instagram stories and it will share it to your Facebook business page stories so that's cool you have your stories on your Instagram covered and your stories on your business page covered um, and so on um, um, your personal Facebook, 
that's like the one time I feel like I'm like kind of spammy to my friends. I do it in my stories on Wednesday and I don't do personal posts on, on about Zaya very often except for sometimes like, you know, once a month or every other month, I'll kind of redirect my friends. Like, you know, we all meet new people every day and some, you did, sometimes you're telling people about Zaya, but they don't join your group. They're just like, oh, that's cool. How cool. I love activewear. And then they don't join your group. They don't buy anything. And they're like, oh, they have no idea, but you sent them a friend request and they accepted that. So on occasion, like every other month, maybe once a month, I'll, you know, do a post on my, my private page that says, hey, did you guys know I have this great side gig? Look at, look at our new releases this week, or I got this cute outfit I'm wearing is in my active workshop. Come check out my VIP group. And I actually direct them to my VIP group. And then about every other month, um, I will invite everyone to like my business page and all of my friends because, you know, people do that all the time. Come and like my business page, then you can choose to like it or not like it. Um, so I'm going to finish off with thinking outside the box. So you you do not own the rights to anything that you've posted on Facebook. This is like my soapbox. Like some people are like my Facebook group or my Facebook account got deleted. Like, oh my God. Well, like Facebook owes you nothing. You are using their territory and they do not want you to make money and not give them money. Like that's, and they want original content. So there are, so many ways outside of the Facebook box to make money. Now, yes, primarily I make money off of Facebook. I will totally admit that. That is my primary business. I'm not savvy, like all that savvy on Instagram. I use it all the time um, to keep like, you know, active on there because I have maybe two people that like actually have gotten new business and follow me on Instagram that like was new. Um, otherwise, you know, um, Facebook is my jam. And so I do my best to stay out of jail and I, but they, they could delete me at any time. They could delete you. And so it's important to um, like have a way to connect with your people. That's not just Facebook. And this is where an email campaign comes in. And I just started doing an email campaign. August was my very first month. I was in this whole business for a whole year. I, I really recommend that you do not wait a year to start an email campaign because I have found that it is very effective. I have, so many friends that are very rarely on Facebook that they will, they'll like come up to me and they'll say, Oh my gosh, your email was so great. I loved it. I'm going to check out that shopping link now, you know, and they, they're my Facebook friend, but they're so rarely on Facebook that the times where my popular um, things that might've shown up in their feed would show up. They're just not on Facebook. So they never see anything that I do on Facebook. They might be in my group, they might be my friend, but they're so rarely on Facebook, they don't see it. So I use MailChimp. You can see I use Wix to create the document that you're all following. Um, Wix can do email campaigns too. Like I could have emailed that all out to you, but I found that it's not as user friendly. So I did not use Wix for um, my like marketing to my customers. So it's on here. Um, I'm going to go to email campaigns step by step. So go to MailChimp.com and sign up for the basic service. Everything I do is free. And I have done so far in September, I've done three email campaigns, like 400 subscribers. And it's not told me I've maxed out. So I'm going to keep on using it as a free service. The next level is still pretty cheap. It's like $10 a month. But I think that you have to hit like 5,000 subscribers before it's going to cost you money. So um, whereas the Wix, I feel like I was sent out two emails one month and it was like, you're at your max for your campaign. So that's also why I don't use Wix because you have to pay for more. And I'm under the belief that I want to keep all my money and not pay for things. So, um, so I use MailChimp. So sign up and it's really, really easy to merge your contacts, your back office. If you go to your contact list, so you go to order history, view my contact list, click on the Excel option. So it has little icons and there's ways you can load your list click Excel, load it into an Excel document and copy and paste it all the way up to email. There's other stuff behind it that you don't need. You just need name. And it's nice. I, I don't know why, but I have their name and address in there just in case. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll do something with it someday. I don't know. But it was really easy to do. You just copy and paste all the fields, name, first name, last name, mailing address, city, state, phone number, email. You copy and paste it. And then once you were in MailChimp, 
it had columns and it said, what is this category? And you design it. This is the person's first name. This is their last name. This is their email address. And then MailChimp knows like who is associated with what, because you guys, this is so cool. After you send your campaign, you can see who's opened your email and you can see who's clicked your links. How awesome is that? It's really cool. So some of those people that I see like clicking and like opening it, I will reach out to them first when I'm talking like, hey, maybe you should have a party. Like, I don't tell them, I saw you open my email four times. <laughs> like, you know, it'd be a little creepy, but um, I do reach out to them and like open up a new conversation with them. Like, hey, um, you know, how are you loving your Zaya? Because I'm thinking they love it because they opened my email four times and they probably want more. So it's a good conversation starter for some of those people that maybe are just watching you on the sidelines. I don't know what links they're clicking. Like I have a lot of links in there. I have my shopping link. I have my join link. I have like YouTube video links. And so I don't know what link. It just says like how many times they're clicking on the link. And so I noticed that my email campaign, um, I sent it out to start my mystery host event for this month. And then I barely got any bites and any orders. And then Wednesday came around and I got like one or two orders. And then Friday was the last day of the event. And I sent out around 10 a.m. an email and it was just the, the mystery host event is ending tonight. These were this week's new releases. And I go to work and I refresh my email on my break. So I sent it at 10, I worked at 11 and I went to like lunch break at like three or four. And I, I loaded my email and I had like two or three orders and they were not from people who were commenting or liking in my Facebook. These were because they were email generated orders. And so it's email is something that you should really consider doing. And I know that it sounds like a little bit of work, but I thought it was going to like, I had this whole daunting thing that it was going to take me eight hours to send one email. And once I got it set up, it probably took two hours the very first time. And every other time now it's taking me 20 minutes. Like it's not a big time commitment, 20 minutes and three orders, 20 minutes and to see who is, um, who is clicking on more links to book up another party. Like that's totally worth your time and investment. Um, you, you know, I started doing weekly new release emails. I just started it this month. Um, but you could just do a monthly, like started off, like these were last month's new releases. Um, you know, this is what's going on and give some general announcements. If any of you would like my, um, to be on my email list, um, just let me know, send me a personal message and I'll add you to that email list so you can see it and kind of tweak it. It's very user-friendly MailChimp. Like it has the format, you just put in your pictures and yours. The other thing is Instagram parties. I've attached a few links on how to do Instagram parties. I'll be totally honest, I've only done one Instagram party and it was a total flop. However, I am a true believer that your host makes or breaks your parties. And so I don't necessarily think that all Instagram parties are going to be a flop just because the one time I tried it was. Um, the gal was like a 20 something gal, you know, and sometimes I feel like the college 20 something, they don't always have the best like reaching out to people and asking for the orders <laughs> you know whereas some of your hosts that are in their 30s are sometimes like totally okay with going to their friends and be like I really want this party to get to you know whatever level can you check it out and buy something you're gonna love it too and so your host can make or break a party and I think that that's the same on Facebook as it is on Instagram I have goose egg parties on Facebook so I am not discounting the Instagram party yet um brief synapses I did um, I used Instagram and I used Instagram stories. I found that everyone was looking at the story. I created a party account. So my account is party Sarah Cook Zaya. And I had all of my person's friends follow that account for the party. And then I removed them after the party. And I just put some stories in there. I did some posts. I used Instagram TV. So you got to kind of get familiar with Instagram. Um, but if you're not like comfortable with doing that, you could even do an Instagram um, group message. And that's how we always used to do it. People didn't create an account. They would just do a group message. Um, and you can add like up to a hundred people on Instagram, um, group messaging, and then just make sure your, your, um, group messaging are quality posts. You know, you don't want to, who, you know, we, 
we all are part of a big group chat, right? And we all know that you don't love to get a ton of notifications. So if you can, you know, but again, um, we all know how to silence it and, and check it when we need to, but we're used to it. It's part of our business. But, um, you know, people that are not used to it, it's not part of their business, don't bombard them. So if you're having an Instagram party on a group messaging system, then, um, you know, make sure you're doing like, you know, maybe just three messages a day and they're quality, good messages and maybe run your party over like six days instead of four. I do all my Instagram or all my Facebook parties over four days. It might be hard to get all your content in um, Instagram in four days. So that is everything I think. I have tried to tell you everything I know to avoid jail. Now it's time for questions. <laughs> Who's got questions? Take notes and have questions. You can unmute yourself and ask them in here. I answered every question you would ever have on Facebook. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, you know, I mean, I'm going to keep on waiting because sometimes people wait to see if other people have questions. So I'm going to hang on here for like two more minutes. Anybody wants to unmute themselves? You feel like it was useful information? You can take home the news. I seriously, it's it's not going to take too much extra work. The 10 extra seconds that it'll do to tweak your picture and your post to not spend two days in jail is is worth it. And this business is still very duplicatable and replicatable, um, even even when you're using original content. But original content is is key. And um, like I said, I I have that Easy Note app that I, um, it, oh, you know what, I didn't say this. You should never copy and paste directly from somebody in Facebook, their post, and then put it right into your Facebook post. What I do recommend is copy and paste their post, put it in your Easy Note app, or, or whatever notes folder you're using on your phone, tweak it a little bit in there, then put it in Facebook. Because again, it's seeing it from Facebook to Facebook. So if you go from Facebook to third party back to Facebook, it's again seeing it's, it's original content then. No questions this time. Read over the document. Okay. Annie has no questions. Kayla, JC, Nora, Anna, Lindsay, Annie. Oh, Annie said no questions. Um, April, no questions. Okay. All right, you guys, that's it. So hopefully it was helpful. Um, hopefully you have some tips and tricks you can take away. If you guys have, um, some things that you like want in, um, I, I'm going to try and do a monthly. I'm not going to do weekly because Katie has amazing, amazing, um, trainings. Natalie has amazing, amazing trainings. All, all of these people that are our uplines who are uplines for uplines do great trainings. I recommend you go in on those when you can or watch some YouTube videos. Um, and so maybe if you guys have something that you want to do a training on, um, this was just more of like a, I all want you to have this information because I do not want anyone to end up in jail because, um, I can only help so many people out so many times through post if you're in jail I don't want to go into jail so. <laughs> uh, all right you are very welcome have a good night you guys and just message me personally if you have any questions or if you want to be on my email list send me your email and I can add you to my um my mailing list so and I'll have to figure out how to email okay bye guys thank you